Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me here on my channel for another Celestron Origin video. My name is Max, so happy to have you today. This week we are in Baker, Nevada, near Great Basin National Park. We've brought the Origin along to these amazing Bortle One night skies out here in the western desert. These are by far some of the darkest skies on the west, and this is one of my favorite locations to come to every single year as the nights are just incredibly clear and crisp, and this Airbnb that I always stay at is always so warm and welcoming to me. The Celestron Origin, of course, has come along for the ride. If you're new to the Celestron Origin, this is Celestron's all-in-one smart telescope. This features a six-inch Rasa optical tube with really fast F2 2.2 optics that get a lot of photons to the CCD camera very, very quickly, and it allows us to take deep sky astrophotos in basically no time. Now, for this trip, I decided to do things a little bit differently, and while normally I would take advantage of the dark skies and put this on a wedge and have all of my full equipment ready to go and do hours and hours and hours of imaging, this time I'm doing it a little bit differently, and I wanted to do something a little bit just more on the fun side for this trip. So out of the two nights that I am forecast of getting, one night is going to be just broadband targets and the next night is going to be just narrowband targets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a schedule on the Celestron Origin app. We're going to keep it in altazimuth mode just like this. And every 30 minutes, we're going to swap to a different target. So we're going to go from sunset to sunrise, which equates to roughly eight hours of full darkness. So every 30 minutes, we're going to move to something else. We're going to start out, obviously, the broadband list and run that all all the way through. I'm going to process all those. And then the next night, I'm going to swap out and use my brand new Antlia quad band filter that should give us nice star colors, but also reveal that H alpha and oxygen three bandwidths for the narrow band imaging. All these objects that I'm going to pick are going to be kind of a mixed bag. I'm going to pick things that include globulars, open clusters, some planetary nebula for the broadband stuff and some galaxies. And then for the narrow band stuff, we're going to obviously focus on supernova remnants, emission type nebula, and so on. 30 minutes, of course, is not a ton of integration time for any of the deep sky targets, but with f2.2 and Bortle 1 dark skies, we should still be able to get presentable photos with just 30 minutes of total exposure time. The settings for the Celestron Origin are going to be pretty simple for tonight. We're going to leave it at the default 10 second exposures. We're going to turn it to ISO 200. That is both for the broadband and the narrowband stuff. One thing I do want to mention, I will take new darks and new flats just to make sure that everything is good with the dark frame subtraction. In recent times, Celestron has had a lot of issues with noise patterns in their final composite photos that the Origin produces, and that is not gone away yet, even in the several software revisions. From my testing, the noise pattern does unfortunately affect both Altazimuth and EQ modes. EQ mode specifically, if you're using the StarSense Auto Guider right now, you do have to use a third-party software to avoid the noise patterns. So as soon as it gets dark, we're going to rock and roll because this is going to be a lot of fun to explore the night sky and different targets with the Celestron Origin from these really dark skies. 